Well, the way I see it, there are two compelling reasons why growth matters. There are the present day market realities and there is the future that we hope to build. And without growth, we put ourselves at risk for simply not making it. And that pretty much takes care of any impact that we hope to have in the future. The very reasons why we exist are reasons to grow. While it's true consumers can buy natural and organic anywhere, you only have to scratch the surface to know why it matters that they buy from a co-op instead. It's our values. It's our values that got us in this business in the first place. We were local way before marketing took hold of the label. And the government is just now catching up on advocating the food literacy we've always talked about. So while others sell what we have always sold, and others teach what we've always held out as good food choices, we have a cooperative structure that is icing on the cake. Done right, our cooperative principles and values keep us steady through the latest fashions in the marketplace and political trends. Well run, our co-ops are their own economic engine making so much possible. But we don't exist in a vacuum. Competition does exist and our expenses will continue to rise. Even if you don't have a Whole Foods in your town, you are impacted by them and all the other stores that have volume advantage. Even if you don't pay your manager, manager a high six-figure salary, you are committing, committed to paying your staff well and provide meaningful benefits. If you have any hope of starting or continuing your community projects, you will need growth to fund them. But fortunately, we're not without resource. Forming NCGA was probably one of the smartest things our co-ops have ever done. But we need all our co-ops growing to enlarge NCGA's buying power. Without that, our market share will erode and our movement will be at risk. There's never any guarantee that we'll make it, but standing still will certainly harm us. It's, in our circles, it's pretty safe to say that growth has a bad rep. And there are good reasons for that. Our existence began in response to the impacts of big ag. And we can see what human growth is doing to the environment. But we're talking about growth in terms of empowering our members in our community. Our growth isn't about enriching shareholders, it's about making the world right. Which brings me to the future. The ICA blueprint is a directive to seize the moment in order to bring cooperatives front and center in creating solutions to world problems. In your booklet, we've printed out the blueprint's introduction. But this introduction captures why we should keep stretching. And I'd like to share just one paragraph of that with you. The cooperative model is a commercially efficient and effective way of doing business that takes account of a wider range of human needs, of time horizons, and of values in decision making. It's an approach which works on a very small scale and on a very large scale. The cooperative sector is worldwide, providing millions of jobs around the globe. Cooperatives develop individual participation, can build personal self-confidence and resilience, and build social capital. Cooperative institutions create long-term security. They are long-lasting, sustainable, and successful. This is, is an historic moment of opportunity for the cooperative sector. With political institutions in many nations struggling to keep up with a rapidly changing world, it is essential that citizens become increasingly resourceful, enterprising, and cooperative in order to face the inevitable social and environmental challenges we face as a world community. Rarely has the argument in favor of cooperatives looked stronger. So I thought this was very impactful. I'd like you to take that sheet home and share it with the rest of your people as well as videos that we just saw. But what might this mean to all of us? So look around. We are the leaders of our movement. We are the ones that eat and breathe co-ops. And it's going to be us that moves the movement forward. Our members know us by our stores. Very few grasp our potential. And so it's not uncommon for them to resist growth. 
and it's completely understandable. It's human nature. Therefore, we must communicate what we know in a variety of ways, and we must do it often. Involving members in the discussions will move their understanding, and this is our job. The directive also means continuing to build our governance skills. Co-ops have died from bad governance, and it's been such a relief to see us doing so much better in the past decades. Who hasn't heard the stories of bickering boards or boards that bully their managers thinking that that represents a strong board? If we did nothing more than treat each other well, we'd make progress. But there's so much more we can do. A strong board and management team knows what the roles are and don't get sidetracked by what they aren't. Boards need to invest in their own development and provide the resources and appropriate compensation to their managers. Unless we turn boards towards their own development, building their knowledge base, refining their governance skills, we will miss the big picture. If we don't hire skilled managers and treat them well, our stores won't thrive. Relatively new in board work is the concept of board study. And I'm not sure how many of you here actually are able to engage in it yet, but this is my plug. If you uh, haven't, it happens by better organizing your meetings. Because the last thing you want to do is turn a two to three hour meeting into a four or five hour meeting. Instead, you free up time to study during board meetings. And you can achieve that by building strong committees that do the heavy lifting of the board. You can be more diligent in addressing only board business during your board meetings and have a facilitator to help you keep the move meeting moving forward. That's my facilitator right there. <laughs> Pretty soon you'll have an hour available to study. Invite speakers, watch videos, share readings. All designed to better help you better understand the world around you. You will be pleased with the results. While it might not always be clear how you'll use that information, it focuses the board and the manager to the future. New board members will stop being so interested in discussing the cheese selection and it will point their minds where you need them to think. I don't mean to minimize the effort that this takes. Considering our regular turnover of board members, it's a constant process. But I can tell you from experience that good process does gain traction. And that healthy boards translate into healthy co-ops. I don't think anyone out there has the solution for our future or has all the right answers. It's really going to take us all together doing things like what we're doing together today to help us figure it out. And growth will mean different things for all of us, because our opportunities and challenges each have their own flavor. But we're no longer alone in figuring this all out. As leaders, we need to see ourselves as part of the larger movement, and we have more resource than ever to help us move us forward. I feel incredibly fortunate to be part of the cooperative movement, and for, look forward to hearing what others share with me today. We are the lucky ones. The cooperative model gives us the tools to make things happen. Let's not keep it a secret. Thank you.